Do you have designs on buying your first home? Well, here to talk with us about how to do just that is Haley Talitsky from Cook Capital. Haley just wrote an article about this very topic for Retirement Daily and joins us now. Haley, welcome. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. So uh, we're eager to have you walk us through the article you wrote for Retirement Daily about this topic. Awesome. Sounds great. So to get started, um, right now is a crazy time in the housing market. Um, it's definitely a seller's market. There is not a lot of inventory and there's a lot of buyers. Um, the pandemic has definitely changed things. People are looking to move out of cities. They're looking for more space and the demand is there. So really the most important thing is to do your research ahead of time, especially in a housing market like today. Um, I know personally for myself, I just bought a home and I started researching about a year before I even put on an offer. Um, I think it's so important just so you know what you're looking for out of a home and you're prepared both financially and mentally because it's a really exciting process, but it also can be very overwhelming. Um, especially if you're not aware of all of the steps, which is why I wrote this article um, to help everyone out and kind of just give an overview. Great. So you want to walk us through some of the steps, the most important steps that people should think about? Yes, absolutely. So when it comes to doing your research, there's four areas that I find very important ahead of time. So first is determining the area that you want to live in. Um, so, you know, like I mentioned, a lot of people are moving out of big cities. Um, so do you value a lot of space? Do you want to be close to bars and restaurants um, or do you prefer more land? So really take the time to do your research, drive around, um, ask people that live in that area, just to make sure that first of all, you know, that's the area that you want to be living in. And then next is determining the type of house. So you could have a home, you could rent an apartment, you could buy a condo, um, townhome. There are a lot of different options. And they all kind of come with their pros and cons. So I think that's really important as well. Um, a lot of condos and apartments and townhomes um, have HOA fees. So you want to keep that in mind. But um, for example, my HOA includes a pool. It includes my internet and trash and obviously outdoor maintenance. So um, I really value that. And I think my fee is worth it um, to others that might not be the case. So really make sure you do your research on that as well. Third is determining the must-haves in your home. So whether it's square footage, the number of bedrooms and bathrooms, um, do you want a lot of land? Um, are you willing to do renovations? That's a big one right now. There's a lot of fixer upper homes on the market, um, but I know for me, um, I live by myself, I work full time, so I was not willing to take on any big projects. And then fourth is determining what you can actually afford. So I think you really need to do a deep dive into your monthly budget. So looking at your income versus your expenses, how much can you comfortably put towards a mortgage each month? And then also factoring in closing costs and your down payment, because um, that is a huge expense that a lot of people don't account for. And um, also determine your credit score, because that really helps you know, approve your interest rate and the type of loan you could qualify for. So make sure that you really take a deep dive into your finances and you know, being realistic about what you can afford comfortably um, you might qualify for a higher dollar amount value of a home, but really thinking, you know, what can I comfortably afford to not push my budget over its limits? Right. And do you have a sense? I'm not, obviously at the moment, interest rates are low, which means that people can afford more home than they could in the past. Do you recommend uh, fixed versus adjustable rates um, for new first time buyers? Yeah. So right now, interest rates are so low. I would definitely recommend fixed. Um, most people are getting approved for fixed interest rates and they're low. I think lately it's been in the high twos so i mean it's really a great time with interest rates um, but definitely look into a fixed loan right and then in terms of down payments uh, i've heard varying uh, uh, numbers being floated around um, what have you heard in terms of what people are putting down or what would you recommend that they put down yeah absolutely so obviously the standard recommendation is 20 percent um, if you put down 20 percent then you don't have to pay pmi insurance which is just an additional um, insurance on your mortgage um, but obviously, if you're a first time home buyer, 20% might be way too high of a number, um, depending on how much you have saved. So um, the average first time home buyer down payment um, percentage is around seven. And um, it depends on the type of loan. So there's two different um, main type of loans that you can qualify for. The government has a first time home buyer's loan. So this might be a good option. I know the down payment is a lot less strict 
So you might be able to put down like three to 5%. Um, but keep in mind, you have to pay PMI insurance throughout the course of the entire loan. Um, a better option might be the conventional loan. So you might be required to put down, you know, five, 20%, depending on the type of loan. Um, but that usually, um, if you have a higher credit score and a higher down payment would be the better option. Um, and keep in mind too, the type of home that you buy. So I know I purchased a condo and the minimum down payment was 10%. So um, again, if you can do 20, that's awesome, but don't feel overwhelmed by that number because there's a lot of flexibility and you definitely don't have to put down 20% right mm -hmm. away. So you, you mentioned too that it's a seller's market and I've heard that sellers are now putting all sorts of restrictions on the offers. For instance, in some cases, they're suggesting that uh, we'll accept your offer, but we're not going to renegotiate uh, back based on uh, what an inspector might find post home inspection. Yep. Yeah. It's a crazy time right now. And that's why it's really important to seek out a trusted realtor and a mortgage lender because they're going to help you throughout this process. Um, you know, my realtor helped me draft my offer letter and helped me determine the right amount. Because you really, you don't know. It's a seller's market and you want to be competitive, but you don't want to, you know, over offer. So I think it's really finding that trusted team to work with because they'll help you determine the right amount um, and how to proceed. Right. And then generally, do you recommend that folks pre-qualify for a mortgage uh, in advance of making offers? Yes. Great point. Absolutely. Especially right now, the market is so competitive. I wouldn't recommend going to even look at a house without having your pre-approval letter ready. It's very easy to do. Once you decide on a mortgage lender, um, they'll work with you. They'll run a quick credit report and then they'll help you determine the amount you can afford. Um, sellers are really looking for that letter right now. If you don't have it, they're probably not going to consider your offer very competitive. So it's very easy to do. And I'd really recommend that as a first step. Right. And, and uh, here in this hot real estate market throughout the country, really, uh, sellers are getting way above their initial ask price. Um, what are your thoughts about getting into bidding wars? Yeah, so I think it just depends on how much you love the home. You you know, keep in mind your must-haves and that list that you made at the beginning when you were doing your research. You know, is this the home you have to have? You have to be careful because, I mean, the bidding wars are pretty crazy right now. Um, I think that's also when having a trusted realtor comes in. They'll help you determine, you know, how much is too much to offer. Um, and again, just keep in mind, we are in a crazy housing market. So if your offer isn't accepted or you get outbidded, there's definitely a home out there for you. You just have to be patient right now. Mm. Well, Haley, we've covered a lot of ground. Anything that we haven't touched on that you'd like to mention before we wrap up? Um, again, just really keep in mind your finances. I think a lot of people are very eager to jump on the train and buy a home because that's what you're hearing right now. Everyone's doing it. You know, we're in a pandemic. People want to work from home. Um, do your research and really take the time to think it out. This is a huge life-changing decision that you're making. Um, so take the time to really think about it. Think about what you can afford, what you're really looking for. Um, everyone's different. You know, you might have a friend or family member that's telling you it's the time to do this, but um, it's different for every person. So take the time to reflect and think about, is this really what you want to do right now? And um, what's the right process for you? Uh, Haley, we want to thank you for uh, chatting with us about this really important next-gen money topic. So uh, much appreciated. Absolutely. Thank you for having me.